Isis. The ground is dry. It needs water. The granaries are almost empty. If the rain doesn't fall soon, the village will weep again this year. According to the Mofu, a drought is a sign that their ancestors are angry. If someone commits an offense like adultery, or if work is undone, the chief can't call rain from the sky. Chief, it would be wise to awaken the stones that make the rain fall. The village is worried because last season was disappointing. It's true, but you know that conditions are not quite right. Certain villagers have committed offenses. I agree, Chief, but should the mistakes of some endanger the entire village, this is not good. I agree about calling for rain, but there are still adulterers to judge, and some roofs must be repaired. Thank you, Chief. I promise you we will be worthy of this decision. We will do what is necessary. I'm counting on you. Thank you, Chief. Let's take out the rainstones. I will bring you what you need. Only members of the chief's clan know the village traditions and rituals. And only these few are permitted to rub the rainstones, which are among the most powerful objects in the chief's possession. In order to liberate their magic, Mats Gravai feeds the stones leaves and python fat. The stones also receive the contents of the stomach of a sacrificial goat along with its blood. This ritual has been handed down through generations of Mofu elders. Stones, I offer you this so that you bring the rain. I offer blood for your food. Wake up and bring us good rain without any violence. Pour the water and wash them well. Then put them back, well protected from the sun. The rainstones will be returned to their resting place in the chief's house. And the entire village will wait for signals from nature that their prayers might be answered. After many days, there's a sign. The appearance of an insect known to be a harbinger of good news. Grandfather, what is this insect? It is a good insect. It comes out of the ground when the rains draw near. When you see them in the fields, you have to go plow the ground quickly. The rain isn't far away now.
Drums call the villagers together. It's time for final preparations before the rain. The ground is hard after months of drought, so a long and heavy rain is crucial. The villagers clear the land where they hope their seeds will sprout, and then they wait. Thank you for the good rain. Underground, the rain brings temporary chaos to a nest of black ants called Malokoteng. These insects are pests for the mofu because they steal seeds. But no ants can be as destructive as termites. The rainfall reveals the full extent of damage to city's house. The roof quickly caves in under the weight of drenched straw. It's now more important than ever for Sidi to find a way to get rid of the termites. The coming of the rain starts a new year and a cycle of rebirth in Mofu traditions. Their insect neighbors below the ground have their own cycles of growth and renewal which are explained in stories and legends. Do you know the story of the millet bird and the ant? No. Then listen, it's a story about helping each other. You see the bird that made its nest right there? The yellow bird? The Malakoteng ant is never far away. After the rain, it always brings out its seeds to dry them, but also for the bird. It's no coincidence that the bird builds its nest here. It sings and tells the ant when the rain is over so that it can bring its seeds out. And in return, the ant lets it peck at its supplies because it knows that the bird has nothing to eat right now. Look. But the bird is honest. Once the millet has grown, it will return the share it borrowed from the ant. It perches on the spikes, shaking off seeds that fall on the ground where the ant can gather them. Once the bird has returned the millet, we can start the harvest. The rain has been plentiful. The riverbeds are full again. The ground is soaked, and sunny days will now provide perfect conditions for the crops to thrive. But the Mofu believe that water and sun are not the only things required for a successful harvest. 
there must be peace and harmony in the spiritual world of their ancestors. The mountains are a sacred place. Mazengal Rock, one of the highest points, is an important spot for rituals. Here they pay tribute to the spirits of the mountains, the Mbolam, to ensure that the crops grow ripe and full. The sacrificer tears off part of the mountain spirit from the rock three times. This symbolizes a union of the village, the mountains, and the ancestors. He distributes a share of the spirit to ambassadors from the village. Finally, he leads the others in sending prayers to the sacred rock. They ask for a plentiful harvest and relief from harsh climate conditions. The granaries in the village are almost empty, and the termites in city's home are threatening to move into the other connected structures and destroy the last of the village food supplies. There's still no sign that the Jaglavak ants have heard the prayers. The termites are still here. Jaglavak didn't come. It did not hear our prayers. We will have to go get it. I've had it with these termites. They have to go. The termite mounds are growing. We can't wait much longer. Glirba doesn't have the right to bother me so much. Did it help me build this house? Do you know how much money I spend for wood and straw to repair what it destroyed? I don't like it. It has to leave. Don't get angry. This is not its house. Don't worry. We will go find Jaglabak. Now that it has rained, it's easy. We will bring it back here and it will drive these termites out. Idrisu, I need you to find the Jaglabak ant. During the dry season, it's unusual to see it, 